Well, I'm working on the sliding dovetail for the uh, top, and uh, not everybody's got a uh, radial arm saw this size and uh, set up like this, so you may probably can't duplicate what I'm doing, but uh, there are a number of different ways of doing this. Uh, you could do it by hand. You do it on a table saw, but uh, it means dropping uh, the saw or the the board onto the saw while it's spinning and that's a dangerous thing uh, to do but uh, it is done uh, it's called drop and stop because you have to stop the dado here in the same with the other side so you have to know where uh, the saw start stops cutting you could do it with a router and just uh, route out the material in, in multiple passes um, that works too you just set up a fence and away you go of course I have to add the dovetail to here anyway so I do have to route it but uh, I've got a half inch uh, dado set set in here and I'm going a half inch deep which will hog out the majority of the material so you can see I made the cut already and uh, I've got these weights on the board to keep it flat so that the depth is constant uh, uh, across uh, the cut and so I've got one more to do on the other side and then uh, we'll worry about putting the dovetails on the uh, well I think the next thing I'll do is uh, put the uh, dovetail in here which is the sliding Well, after uh, making my uh, sliding dovetail here, uh, you saw me route the the groove in here and uh, and route the side. We'll see how well it slides. That's pretty good. It's about a, about an inch to go. That would be about it. It's in there. So I think I gotta plane off a little bit. Uh, this one I just pushed in over here and uh, it's got about four more inches to go. So uh, I got a little planing to do on the dovetails, but I think it'll be just fine. Well, I slid the top on after reassembling the uh, lower part of the case so it uh, slides on pretty nice and I had to whack it a little bit to get it on the last inch or so but uh, I think we're all set here obviously uh, it, you've got to put the uh, edge on it as well as the the curves that uh, match the the fronts but uh, we'll do that much later uh, I think the next step is to work on the next uh, piece of molding, the, the lower molding. Well I took the uh, template uh, that I had made uh, for the lower molding and transcribed it to a piece of uh, three-quarter inch uh, mahogany here and then cut it out with the bandsaw and uh, cleaned it up and then use the router jig just as I had before to create the cove and this time I ran the, a um, roundover bit across it to get the cor correct shape and uh, I think this is 
how I want it to be. <coughs> so it's a pretty nice shape there. It's got to be carved here uh, where obviously the there's too much material there and of course there's some sanding to do the to clean it up and then of course it, this has all got to be cut off over here um, because there'll be another piece that comes along this side that's mitered into here so that the uh, molding that's on the side here rests on a piece that's underneath there and then the feet come up uh, has a little uh, square post that comes through there that helps hold them on so uh, I'm going to do some carving here along this edge and then uh, miter that corner well Doug uh, Mulder was over yesterday and uh, we uh, decided to glue up the case uh, Doug gave me a hand doing that uh, it's not a particularly difficult glue up but uh, since he was here it made it go a lot easier and a lot quicker the top is not glued on uh, it's just slid in place uh, with you know the sliding dovetail it has to come off yet to uh, car, uh, cur put the uh, curb on the edge and then cut out the uh, pattern on the front but we'll do that much later so now uh, it's time to put the bottom molding on so over here I have the bottom molding so what I did was uh, had a piece of I think it's five inch and uh, put this edge on it which is uh, what it should be to match the molding as it comes down uh, on the previous piece and then there's two side pieces um, which are mitered in the corners here and all of this will go underneath the case and I'm going to use screws to hold it in place from the bottom there the I have the uh, molding uh, clamped on in place and uh, we're ready for some screws well I've uh, fastened the lower molding to the bottom here using inch and a half number 10 screws and there's not a lot of uh, uh, screws in here but it's certainly enough to hold it on uh, but this uh, you don't want to trap the base here it's going to move this hole back here is a little larger so here it's more stable and don't forget I got to put a foot uh, on here yet uh, so there has to be a mortise cut in here uh, to help hold the foot on and then of course we got I guess blocks knee blocks I guess you would call it uh, coming off of the foot that goes around uh, this section there about five inches long in fact here's one of them so it goes right there like so so um, now I'm gonna set it up and then I'm gonna uh, glue and pin nail in the side molding I'm putting the uh, side molding on now and we'll put a little glue on the front here kind of hold things together and again since we're running cross grain we don't want to trap things and use there goes a compressor using my 18th century pin nailer Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, it's time to uh, start on the feet now. And uh, it's a little short cabriolet leg and then uh, a good size ball and claw. Uh, as you could see in the earlier pictures when I had uh, photographs of the, the beginning. And then um, this toe here is curved back. Uh, this one has a couple of knuckles in it. So uh, that's going to be new. I don't believe I might have uh, curved one uh, ball and claw foot. But anyway, uh, this one is the uh, stub cut off of it. Uh, so I can measure exactly where they're going to fit and then make a template from the top because I have to make a mortise on, on the underside here and I chose to make it one inch square uh, that this will fit up into and then it has to fit exactly on the edge here like that so it's important to get that uh, measured correctly and then uh, we'll chop the mortise out with uh, chisels and then of course we have to uh, clean this up and then carve a ball and claw so I think I'm going to start by um, working on uh, the ball and claw here. 